Hey everyone, it's Mary and thanks for coming back to my channel. So this is going to be uh, part two of my garage sale haul. Uh, I have a, just a few more things to show you. And then I'll turn the camera around and I'll just show you my, my shelf here. But actually you're seeing most of it right now. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so just a couple brooches. Uh, I got this one and this has amethyst um, stones in it. And unfortunately I goofed and totally missed. It's missing one stone. So I've got to get on the hunt and find, let's see, I have to find, you know, a replacement stone for that. See if I can get it. Then I was really tickled to find this one. That's really, really gorgeous. Whoops, turn it this way. So that will be really nice for fall. Great fall colors. Really pretty. So I got those. And I saw this little cup, this little glass. It's just pressed glass. It's got grapes, a pear, and I think an apple on it. Just real cute. So I picked that up. Got some turkey salt and peppers. Really, really cute. Okay, so guys, I've heard that um, some people say in the live sales that they don't collect uh, matching uh, salt and pepper shakers anymore just because, you know, they look the same. They don't. Um, you know, they don't collect those anymore. And for these, you know, the turkeys are kind of common. I thought that when I go to sell these, I'll just go ahead and sell them individually or do a choice. You know, they, the person can buy one or buy both. So that's what my plan is. Tell me what you think about that. You know, that's not appropriate, I don't think, for all salt and peppers um, that are matching, especially some of the rarer or more expensive ones. But let me know what you think about selling individually. I haven't seen, you know, resellers do that um, when there's a matching set. So let me know. Uh, Got some Christmas cards. Love that old time station wagon that it looks like from the 50s. So I picked those up. Um, I got this really, really neat decanter. Um, it says on the front, it says Shenley. So if anybody knows if that's a name of an alcohol or what, you know, I have no idea, but it's really cool. Um, on the bottom, let's see, it says federal law forbids sale of use of this bottle. And then there's a number. Um, so I, let me know what all that means, guys. But I thought that was nice. And I found these needlepoint in uh, embroidery hoop. Um, you know, wall hangings. They're very, very nice. They're kind of dimensional. So all of this here um, are like of little dimensional tufts, tufts of yarn or fabric, whatever that is. And then 
a little bit here with the, I'm calling these Orioles, I don't know, but right there too, that's really cool. So I got those. And really just two more things, you guys. Um, and they are on the floor, so give me a second, I'll, I'll pick them up. So, I got this whole big container of vintage fabric. So, um, this lady, she was, you know, going to try to do quilts. And a lot of this stuff she bought uh, secondhand also. So, there's a lot of um, vintage fabric in here. Obviously, I'm not going to show you everything, but um, here's some of it. I like this blue flower pattern. That's really nice. And a lot of the fabric is more like a, um, like a larger weave cotton, almost like a feed sack or tea towel type feel to it. Um, so, yeah, really, really nice. Here's some. Here's some more. So, anyhow, I love it. It's great. So, um, Stay tuned for some journals I'll be making with this and whatever else I, I think of. And then, last but not least, I've always been attracted to the vintage paper cutters. And I got one. I got one. So, um, this has Ingento, I, I think, I think that's an I, Ingento, and on the back it's got a, it's got some instructions about replacing the spring and adjusting the blades and um, it says ideal school supply company chicago 20 illinois so 20 i that might be the zip code i don't know i don't know what that is but i thought it was really cool i did try some paper in it it doesn't cut perfectly hey if anybody out there knows how to go about sharpening this blade, let me know, because I definitely would like to use this. You know, I've been wanting one to use it. So um, I'm glad I got a, a wooden one. I think that's really cool. So if you like this kind of content, I'd really appreciate it if you'd uh, give me a thumbs up consider subscribing to my channel. I'm going to start having live sales uh, starting next week. Cindy of Mimi's Cottage invited me to uh, come along uh, and on the 29th of June, Wednesday, her normal time, Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. Eastern, uh, I'll be on with her selling some of my vintage items. So I hope you'll join us. And I'm just going to go ahead and turn the camera around real quick and uh, so you can see the top shelf. Okay, guys, here, here it is. Here's the top shelf. Um, I don't know if you remember, I showed you this um, picture that I thrifted and I just love it. I put those uh, flowers in it and I just love it. At first I thought about um, selling it, but I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it for now. And 
There's a really cute little July sailor boy. He looks like a sailor with his striped shirt. I thrifted him. I got my 4th of July cupcake picks. I'm from Oroville, Ohio, and that is the home of Smucker's Jelly. And every summer they had the Jelly Jamboree. And it was a big um, celebration down probably over the 4th of July, I'm guessing. I'm not sure. But, you know, they always had a parade and it was a carnival and they had um, the world's largest jelly roll. Um, and that was crazy because it just was covered in bees. It was crazy. So there's my sister's um, fairy light, fairy lamp that's going to go to her. And you saw the rest. Um, I pulled that Truckin' for America patch out of my mom's sewing box. And uh, I think that's really cool. It'll eventually go on something of mine. And my tin down there. And that's it, guys. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.